It's my vacation, and I'm trying to take a bit of a break from the dark, violent, bloody movies and kick back with a family-friendly movie about a young girl who must defend her home from a group of escaped convicts. Did they reboot Home Alone already? This is Becky. <laughs> Becky, played by Lulu Wilson, appears to be in trouble. Ah, the classic start-at-the-end tactic. Spoilers, she lives. The film attempts to shock us with a parallel between the school system and the prison system. Anyone who's been to public school will say, well, duh. Becky and her dad, played by Joel McHale, are off on a trip. Already I know this is gonna be fun. Where's mom? She died about a year ago. These two have a strange relationship, which I no doubt will be healed before the end. I have confidence in this movie. But when they get to their family cabin, dad's got an agenda. He breaks the news that he's getting remarried. And here they are now, complete with instant stepbrother. Oh, this is gonna get wacky. Family time is awkward and Becky storms off to her awesome clubhouse to make fists with her toes. That's when a group of escaped convict Nazis show up. They're looking for a special key that was hidden on the property, which Becky has. The leader, Dominic, is played by Kevin James. They hold the family hostage while Becky is out there running loose, ready to make these convicts regret dropping by especially since they killed one of her dogs. Wow, these guys are serious. They even torture dad. Then they kill him. This isn't a family movie, is it? Rated R? They still make those? Becky makes Dominic regret it already. Brutal! She didn't just scratch him with the key. She didn't just poke him. She gouged his fucking eye out. She gets away while he's got to take a knife to remove his dangling eyeball. <laughs> Another henchman has her cornered, but Becky is clever. Now, this isn't seen in movies a lot. The good guy gets the bad guy down, then turns away and leaves, giving the bad guy a chance to get up and make more trouble. Drives me nuts. You ever scream at your TV, just kill him, yo? You won't be doing that here. Becky finishes him off. No second chance, no mercy, no moral quandary. They killed her dad and her dog, and he dies for it. It's both satisfying, refreshing, and, oh yeah, a bit horrifying. But Becky isn't done. She taunts them over the radio, she sets traps, she's extremely capable, and maybe a touch of that teenage sense of invincibility makes her more dangerous than these guys expect. She's fierce, alright? And Becky thinks nothing of ramming a boat motor into her enemies. The biggest, meanest one of them, Apex, is actually all over this violence, and he wants out, so he lets Becky go. When it's just Becky and Dominic, you know, the Super Soaker is really an underappreciated weapon. All those stop, drop, and roll PSAs they drilled into us as kids actually works, people. Apex returns to help Becky, giving her enough time to drive a goddamn lawnmower over Dominic's face. Yo ass is grass! Becky isn't really impressed with Apex right now. Becky still has the key, one of her dogs, and a former potential stepmother who literally dodged a bullet. You know, I have no legal obligation to you, right? Yeah, yeah. She later tells her story to the cops, which they find slightly disturbing. And that's Becky. And no, we never find out what the key is for. But it's left open enough for a sequel, and possibly a franchise? You take teenage angst, that sense of invulnerability, and a lesser developed moral compass, and you get a deadly, borderline sociopathic killer. You get a character you don't see coming. You expect fighting with kid weapons, which she does use, but she uses them in ways not intended by the manufacturer. Most movies give the good guys a moral limit, even when dealing with bad guys. Becky fights hard with everything she's got, with everything at her disposal. Maybe it's a little unbelievable, but this would be true with most adults as well. We can't all be John McClane. She's already coming from a place of anger, resentment, and fury, and that's before the convicts arrive. I briefly wondered who's scarier, a skinhead or a pissed off sociopathic teenager with violent tendencies and nothing to lose. Paul Blart plays bad guy pretty well. It's no shock if some of the things I've read about him are true. Usually in a story involving children, they make sure the kids are not really hurt. Not that I want to see that, but it does take away some of the drama and suspense if we go in knowing the kids will be okay. You ever really think Kevin was gonna die? No. We're shown early on how heartless they are, and even demonstrates that they have no problem hurting children. That does ramp up the tension and suspense, and the stakes become more real. They don't shy away from the violence and gore either. They steer into it. 
When they show someone getting hurt, they really commit. Why dance around it? Her relationship with her father is a bit thin. She's mad at him for a variety of reasons. We don't really get that attachment before he's killed. We don't get a full sense of what's ripped away. And then there's zero attachment between Becky and her priest stepmom and brother. The future stepmom and brother are not in the best position to be hostages, being held by white supremacists, and their only hope doesn't really give a shit about them. You still have to suspend some disbelief, not from how capable Becky is, but how vicious, yet idiotic the convicts are. They are obviously not taking Becky as a genuine threat early on, but when it's apparent, they still make baffling decisions. One on one, she's wiry. Not so much if they ever ganged up on her, or just shot her on sight. Some things feel rushed or dropped for the sake of pacing, and I have questions. What is the key for? Why is it here? Why is Becky's father even considering marrying a woman before she has a good relationship with his daughter? They do seem to downplay the racism aspect, which would be through the roof with this bunch, but thankfully, the Nazi angle feels mostly incidental. I already get enough racism on the news. It's an action thriller, escapist entertainment, and it stays in its lane. Becky takes on her opponents in a way that feels more honest and realistic. Retribution ain't pretty. Mercy looks good on heroes, but Becky isn't trying to be heroic. She is out for blood. Becky is three and a half hours. The action is satisfying, the story dodges some expectations, but it's still kind of predictable, and Becky is an interesting character. Kevin James is almost too believable as a monster, but the bad guy's ineptitude almost rivals the wet bandits. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell, you know the usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!